Okay, Chris Charlton here uh, from Where Does God Tell the Poop, and today we're having a look at the House of the Dead Overkill, the Lost Reels. Um, this, the sort of iPhone kind of quasi spin off of the Wii game from about two or three years ago, uh, which was also ported to um, PSN recently as a director's cut. Um, that game kind of an, an on-rail shooter where you're using your Wii Remote or your PlayStation Move uh, to shoot at zombies. Uh, in this, obviously this is on the iPhone, so you can't really do that. Um, and in a sense, that kind of means it, it loses some of the, I don't know, some of the vibe that they were going for in that game. So, there are three different control options, two from the get-go and uh, one you unlock later on. Uh, after you finish the default levels. You've got a virtual pad, which really isn't as bad as all that. Um, you're just moving crosshairs around the screen by using your thumb, but uh, it's kind of like playing an on-rail shooter with a mouse. It kind of defeats the object a, a little bit. Um, you could say the accelerometer, where you're tilting to move the, the, the crosshairs, is, is a little bit more, I guess, kind of faithful to that sort of light gun kind of experience, um, but it's still not quite right, and obviously you're going to look like a tit on public transport. Uh, you also, once you finish the, the couple of scenarios that you get with the download initially, you unlock this uh, tap mode where you touch the zombies to shoot them. Um, you might think that would make the game really, really easy, but it doesn't. It actually makes it a lot harder because your thumb's too big uh, to get in headshots, and headshots, as we'll see, are, are really important in this game. So, uh, just for the sake of practicality, I'm going to go with Virtual Pad here. Um, you can see just for the title screen here, uh, the original game um, went for a kind of grindhouse feel, trying to differentiate itself from the oddly localized and, and really, really camp uh, Sega original games. Uh, this went for, yeah, more of a sort of grittier kind of feel, um, very sort of over-the-top uh, violence, campy violence, and uh, over-the-top swears in the dialogue, um, and this kind of cuts a lot of that out. There's a lot of gore, um, but the dialogue, um, very, very little of it, and what there is is in kind of like comic book style uh, text pop-ups. Um, and just seeing the word motherfucker written over and over again in uh, comic book speech is probably less funny uh, even than, than hearing it. Uh, so because this is the 21st century and there is time for in-app purchase, uh, there is an in-app purchase system here. Um, actually, to get where you're going uh, in the game, um, it, it, it's not really necessary to fork out real money for cash, as they call it, with a charming K there. Uh, you pick up enough just running around and rewards for getting kills and stuff like that. Um, with that, you can buy sort of one-off consumables. Uh, you can buy things that upgrade your life bar, things like that. Um, buy new weapons and upgrade the ones you have. Uh, really, if you're just looking to play through the game, uh, stay with the shotgun and upload it to the full, as I have done, and you're going to have no troubles getting through the levels that are here. Uh, what's a little bit gross is that there are only two, level, two levels in this. Uh, this game uh, costs about 400 yen, about five bucks. Um, so it's kind of grim to only see what's really about 30 minutes of content here by default. Uh, if you want more, uh, one extra scenario here that sort of sold as movie chapters and 170 yen, another two dollars on top of that. Um, so go for it if that's your kind of thing. Sorry, I'm not. So, yeah, you've also got your usual sort of achievement stats, things like that. Um, the main gameplay, there's, there's two modes. We've got a story mode, uh, where you are just playing through the stages, a survival mode as well, um, where you're just sort of in one place and zombies come at you in waves, as you might expect. Um, I did play the survival mode, but I sort of quit out without saving, which is why my score is a mighty zero. Um, it's really not that entertaining. I'll just show off the story mode here. The survival mode is... You know, I mean, it, it kind of, it's the sort of thing that probably would be fun with two people. Um, and obviously, given that this is on the iPhone or your iPad, you can't really cram two people around uh, one device to play this sort of a game. So 
that sort of human thrill is, is lost. And I think probably that's a, a big sort of down point for the game in general. It's this sort of, you know, I don't know, on rail shooter is, is a lot fun with, with a lot more fun with a friend and you know I mean you can't play that. You can't play this game with a friend. Um, so yeah, two basic scenarios here. One is set in a hospital uh, and it's harder. One is set in a house of the dead, uh, which isn't. What's odd here is that the setup in this game is that you're playing, is, is that you're shooting mutants, not zombies. No zombies here, no zombies to be seen. Um, that seems bizarre, even though, you know, the game's of the dead. Um, so this, you know, it kind of takes a little while to get going, so we'll jump into one of the more inter interesting scenarios here. Uh, you got a couple of characters that they're, they're pretty much the same. Uh, Agent G from House of the Dead 2. Um, and I've unlocked this minigun, but um, it's not all that. Um, so, well, it doesn't really matter. I mean, we're just going to be using the shotgun to, to kill fools here. Headshot's important. And here we go, so we're moving the cursor around, I've just got my thumb on the left side of the screen and picking people off um, Extreme like that. Fires. And there's a combo system in place, high scores are really important. And you'll see the only, yeah, the only real way to take these guys out is by shooting them in the head, which is why the, the just tapping doesn't really work. I'm going to shoot that here, that lets me go into a sort of bullet time effect, and one thing that is really satisfying is, you know, being able to use one shotgun blast to, to pound through about three or four zombie skulls at once. Sorry, mutant skulls. Um, let's get my messaging right here. Extreme Fuck, that is a terrible gameplay. And... Extreme violence. You know, probably you can see right now whether you're going to want this game or not. Um, you can see the shot an extra little bit um, There's nothing in the way of multiple cars, really. Uh, there's a couple of hidden areas uh, where you'll shoot more zombies. Extreme um, but there's, there's nothing really in the way of, of character or anything here. Um, and this is about as difficult as game gets as well. It's it's pretty Extreme cool. violence. I think one of the things again with if you played a uh, an on rail shooter I'm with Help me! with a gun, there's some challenge in terms of aiming there. Uh, I'm gonna get that guy killed. Thank you. Um, there's a challenge involved with aiming, obviously. And when you're playing with a controller, this sort of thing, uh, you're handicapped by Extreme slow violence. movement of a cursor around the screen. Reload. Uh, but if you were to sort of play it with a mouse or by moving around with your finger here, it's really not that hard to get Extreme accurate shots in. Um, and I'm just sort of motoring through here with, with no real difficulties. Um, as I said, I probably beat this the two levels that are on display here in under an hour, um, you know, having had to retry maybe twice, um, and yeah, there you go, really, there's, there's not much to this, uh, honestly, uh, I'll show you the rest of this level, but, but there's not much to it, um, it kind of evokes, uh, rage, if you remember, uh, when Rage got ported to iOS, it sort of came over as a pseudo on rail shooter. Um, and that was a lot of fun, but that had kind of had more in the way of sort of non linearity, being able to choose a different path or, you know, find more secrets on display. Uh, there's really nothing here to sort of dig on through. But that said, it's not. Bad. It's it's not it's perfectly confident. Um, parts of it, you know, I mean, this stage is sort of as, as good as it gets in terms of, of movement, where things are coming a little bit more thick and fast. 
violent. Um, I've got a grenade. I'm just going to pop that and blow those two up. Um, and as I said, it can be satisfying to pick off several zombies all at once. Reload. But extreme violence. You know, I mean, there's just there's nothing to it really. There's nothing especially good about it. Uh, there's nothing especially bad about it either. Um, I think when you were playing it on console, and there you go, um, when you were playing this sort of thing on console, there was the appeal of that campy B-movie schlock, um, which just doesn't exist here because they've taken those sort of dialogue scenes out and any chance of characterization kind of goes out the window, um, you know, and replaced by these, these comic book cutscenes. I've just kind of if I hop into something else, I'll, I'll give you a quick idea of, of what I'm talking about there. Oh, there you go, it goes on to the next level. So this is one of the, the boss scenes. Um, and this is the extent of it. Um, sorry, I accidentally skipped that. How professional of me. Um, but, yeah, there's, there's just nothing there. This is the sort of thing that lives or dies by its presentation. Um, and its ability to win you over with its sort of campy charm and once you take all that charm out you're left with something that while it isn't dreadful um, it's hardly something that you'll really want to spend your hard earned on um, and, and that's it really uh, for more on House of the Dead Overkill of the... I've forgotten the, the name of the thing the forgotten scenes the deleted scenes I can't be the deleted scene because that would make me look the house terrible. Of the the dead. Lost Reels, there you go. Uh, for more of the House of the Dead, Overkill of the Lost Reels, including a full written review, head on over to WhereDoesGodzillaPoop.com.